Hi guys. It is just a cold, gray, <coughs> drizzly, yuck day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization down here in the gloomy paradise of Inverness, Florida. Here on this gray Thursday, January 23rd. 2020 and uh, this is although you can't see me this really is Sam Mitchell of Collapse Chronicles and I'm just doing what I do every day and that is chronicling the collapse of global industrial civilization and the planets and I am getting ready for my interview with uh, Charles Hall who I think was the very man who invented the term E-R-O-E-I. So we're going to find out, get to the bottom of E-R-O-E-I and why that is so important to the collapse of global industrial civilization. But Charles sent me this article uh, as part of uh, what he wants to talk about today, highly recommending this article by a fellow named Mark P. Mills. And uh, Mark P. Mills has written this uh, for the Foundation for Economic Education, strangely enough. And he has come up, Mark has come up with 41, 41 inconvenient truths on the new energy economy otherwise known as 41 reasons why the Green New Deal is a joke. Take it away, Mark P. Mills. <clears throat> a week does not pass without a mayor, governor, policymaker, or pundit joining the rush to demand or predict an energy future that is entirely based on wind, solar, and batteries freed from the burden of the hydrocarbons that have fueled societies for centuries. Regardless of one's opinions about whether <clears throat> or why an energy transformation is called for the physics and economics of energy combined with scale realities make it clear <clears throat> that there is no possibility of anything resembling a radically new energy economy in the foreseeable future. Bill Gates has said that when it comes to understanding energy realities, we need to bring math to the problem. He's right. So, in my recent Manhattan Institute report titled, The New Energy Economy, An Exercise in Magical Thinking, I did just that. Herein, then, is a summary of some of the bottom line realities from the underlying math. And then he has a link to the full report for explanations, documentation, and citations, which you can find if you click on the link. Okay. 41 realities about why the Green New Deal is a joke. We're going to start with realities about the scale of energy demand. <clears throat> Number one, hydrocarbons supply over 80% of world energy. If all that were in the form of oil, the barrels would line up from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles and that entire line would grow by the height of the Washington Monument every week. Number two, the small two percentage point decline in the hydrocarbon share of world energy use entailed over two trillion dollars in cumulative global spending on alternatives over that period, 
solar and wind today supply less than 2% of global energy. Number three, when the world's 4 billion poor people increase energy use to just one third of Europe's per capita, per capita level, global demand rises by an amount equal to twice America's total consumption. Number four, a 100 times growth in the number of electric vehicles to 400 million on the roads by 2040 would displace 5% of global oil demand. Number five, renewable energy would have to expand 90-fold to replace global hydrocarbons in two decades. It took a half century for global petroleum production to expand only tenfold. Number six, replacing U.S. hydrocarbon-based electric generation over the next 30 years would require a construction program building out the grid at a rate 14-fold greater than any time in history. Number seven, eliminating hydrocarbons to make U.S. electricity impossible soon, infeasible for decades, would leave untouched 70% of U.S. hydrocarbons use. America uses 16% of world energy. Number eight, efficiency increases energy demand. Efficiency increases energy demand by making products and services cheaper. This is called Jevons' paradox. Since 1990, global energy efficiency has improved 33%. The economy grew 80%, and global energy use is up 40%. Hmm. Number nine, efficiency increases energy demand. Since 1995, aviation use per passenger mile is down 70%, but air traffic rose more than tenfold, and global aviation fuel use rose over 50%. Number 10, efficiency increases energy demand. You're noticing a repeating pattern here. Since 1995, energy used per byte is down about 10,000 fold, but global data traffic rose about a million fold. Global electricity used for computing has soared. Number 11, since 1995, total world energy use rose by 50%, an amount equal to adding two entire United States worth of demand. Number 12, for security and reliability, an average of two months of national demand for hydrocarbons are in storage at any time. Today, barely two hours of national electricity demand can be stored in all utility-scale batteries, plus all the batteries and one million electric cars in America. 13. Batteries produced annually by the Tesla Gigafactory, the world's biggest battery factory, 
can store three minutes worth of annual U.S. electric demand. 14. To make enough batteries to store two days worth of U.S. electricity demand would require 1,000 years of production by the world's biggest battery factory. 15. Every one billion dollars in aircraft produced leads to some five billion dollars in aviation fuel consumed over two decades to operate them. Global spending on new jets is more than fifty billion dollars a year and rising. Do the math. 16. Every one billion dollars on data centers leads to seven billion dollars in electricity consumed over two decades. Global spending on data centers is more than one hundred billion dollars per year and rising. Now he talks we're going to move into the next phase, realities about energy economics. 17. Over a 30-year period, $1 million worth of utility-scale solar or wind produces 40 million and 55 million kilowatts, respectively. One million dollars worth of shale well produces enough natural gas to generate 300 million kilowatt hours over 30 years. <clears throat> 18. It cost about the same to build one shale well or two wind turbines. The latter combined produces 0.7 barrels of oil equivalent energy per hour. The shale rig averages 10 barrels of oil per hour. 19. It costs less than 50 cents to store a barrel of oil or its equivalent in natural gas but it costs $200 to store the equivalent energy of a barrel of oil in batteries. 20. Cost models for wind and solar assume, respectively, 41% and 29% capacity factors, i.e. how often they produce electricity. Real-world data reveal as much as 10 percentage points less for both. That translates into $3 million less energy produced than assumed over a 20-year life of a 2-megawatt, $3 million wind turbine. 21. In order to compensate for episodic wind and solar output, U.S. utilities are using oil and gas burning reciprocating engines, big cruise ship like diesels. Three times as many of these have been added to the grid since 2000 as in the 50 years prior to that. 22. Wind farm capacity factors have improved at about 0.7% per year. This small gain comes mainly from reducing the number of turbines per acre, leading to a 50% increase in average land used to produce one wind kilowatt hour. 23. Over 90% of America's electricity and 99% of the power used in transportation comes from sources that can easily supply energy to the economy 
any time the market demands it. 24. Wind and solar machines produce energy an average of 25% to 30% of the time and only when nature permits. Conventional power plants can operate nearly continuously and are available whenever needed. <clears throat> 25. <coughs> the shale <coughs> the shale revolution collapsed the prices of natural gas and coal, <coughs> the two fuels that produce 70% of electricity. But electric rates have not gone down, instead rising 20% since 2008. Direct and indirect subsidies for solar and wind consumed those savings. <clears throat> All right, let's look at some energy physics. <clears throat> 26. Politicians and pundits like to invoke moonshot language, but transforming the energy economy is not like putting a few people on the moon a few times. It is like putting all of humanity on the moon permanently. 27. The common cliché an energy tech disruption will echo the digital tech disruption. But information producing, producing machines and energy producing machines involve profoundly different physics. This cliche is sillier than comparing apples to bowling balls. 28. If solar power scaled like computer tech, a single postage stamp size solar array would power the Empire State Building. That only happens in comic books. 29. If batteries scaled like digital tech, a battery the size of a book costing three cents could power a jetliner to Asia. That only happens in comic books. 30. If combustion engines scaled like computers, a car engine would shrink to the size of an ant and produce a thousand-fold more horsepower actual ant size engines produce 100,000 times less power. <laughs> 31. No digital-like 10-time gains exist for solar tech. Physics limit for solar cells is a max cons conversion of about 33% of the photons into electrons. Commercial cells today are at 26%. 32. No digital-like 10-time gains exist for wind tech. Physical limit for wind turbines is a mass capture of 60% of energy in moving air. Commercial turbines now achieve 45%. 33. No digital-like 10 times gains exist for batteries. Maximum theoretical energy in a pound of oil is 1,500% greater than max theoretical energy in the best pound of battery chemicals. 34. About 60 pounds of batteries are needed to store the energy equivalent of one pound of hydrocarbons. 35. At least 
100 pounds of materials are mined, moved, and processed for every one pound of battery fabricated. 36. Storing the energy equivalent of one barrel of oil, which weighs 300 pounds, requires 20,000 pounds of Tesla batteries worth $200,000. $200,000 versus what is a barrel of oil today? About 55. 37. Carrying the energy equivalent of the aviation fuel used by an aircraft flying to Asia would require $60 million worth of Tesla-type batteries, weighing five times more than that aircraft. 38. It takes the energy equivalent of 100 barrels of oil to fabricate a quantity of batteries that can store the energy equivalent of one single barrel of oil. 39. A battery-centric grid and car would mean mining gigatons more of the earth to access the lithium, copper, nickel, graphite, rare earths, cobalt, etc., and using millions of tons of oil and coal, both in mining and to fabricate metals and concrete. 40. China dominates global battery production with its grid 70% coal-fueled, and electric vehicles using Chinese batteries will create more carbon dioxide than saved by replacing oil-burning engines. 41. The 41st inconvenient truth about the Green New Deal and all the rest of this crap, one would no more use helicopters for regular transatlantic travel than employ a nuclear reactor to power a train or photovoltaic systems to power a nation. So who is Mark P. Mills? Mills? Mark P. Mills is a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute, a McCormick School of Engineering faculty fellow at Northwestern University, and the author of Work in the Age of Robots. Maybe we need to get Mark on the line, but right now I got to get ready to get Professor Charles Hall on the line to give us a reality check about where we are in the opening bell of 2020. So if you like what Mark P. Mills uh, had to tell you about the 41 inconvenient truths of the new energy revolution, please spend a few seconds to uh, thumb this video up. If you did not like hearing these 41 inconvenient truths and still believe that the new energy revolution is going to save the planet, then spend a few seconds thumbing down Mark Mills. And while you're over here, please spend a few seconds to subscribe to Collapse Chronicles and get out there and enjoy this uh, planet on this gloomy day while you still can. Bye, guys.